Today, we're working with our friends at Heinz Toyota in Mankato, Minnesota. Okay, so welcome to our detailed review on the technology on the 2020 Toyota Avalon Hybrid. All right, so we are going to start with the Driver's Information Center. And the first thing I'll point out to you is you'll notice on the digital display in the middle that on the left there are a bunch of icons. These are all your main menus, okay? And so we'll be going into each one of these and taking a look at what they do. To do that, and take a look at the steering wheel for a second on the left, I'm using these four cursor buttons and the OK button and occasionally the back button. That's all I'm using. So starting at the top here, I've got, I'm on this leaf icon and you'll notice I had above here, I had three, let me just go back to it a second, I had three dots. So the first one's digital speed, next one is fuel economy, and the next one is eco guidance. And if you just leave it and don't touch anything, that's the screen that will stay on there. Okay, now pushing the down arrow, I can go straight to the next thing, which is driver support. And on that screen, there is nothing to push. Instead, what you get is your lane guidance. This would also be where your adaptive cruise would show up. And then you have a compass and your digital speedometer. Moving down to the next one, you come to media. And here you can, um, if you click the OK button, you can get to your sources. So we have FM, we have AM. I love how it kind of rolls forward and really uh, makes the part you're on bold. So this is where you select your sources. So let's just say you're on your source, you press OK. Now you've got all your presets that you can go to. Okay, and once you press your preset, then that's what it goes to and that's what it shows. All right, going down one more on the left. Now I'm to this uh, car icon and I've got four dots above. So I'm on energy monitor right now. So you can graphically watch how your energy is being used or regenerated. If you go over one more, you get tire pressure. I love how they show the tires through the car. That, that's, that's really cool. And then you've got all your uh, sort of your safety system status. So we've got pre-collision system, parking assist, blind spot monitor, rear cross traffic alert. All right, so um, if I go one more over, then I get my tack, which is really cool because the car doesn't come with a physical tack. Okay, uh, so I like that. Now, if I use a down arrow again, now I get to like system settings, okay? And here's a lot of your safety systems. So here's your lane departure warning. Here's your pre-collision system on or off, your blind spot monitoring on or off, and then your rear cross traffic alert on or off, and then of course your um, uh, rear parking sensors on or off. Now you notice there's a little arrow that points to the right still, so I can go one more to the right. Okay, now I've got the parking sensors that I, I was already on. But here's your HUD, okay? So if I press and hold on that, I can turn the HUD off. I can turn it back on again, okay? Now, if I press and hold the OK button, so not just press, but press and hold, now I can adjust the HUD brightness in position. If I click the OK button, I can increase the brightness. And then if I use my, that was just using the left, right arrows. If I use the up, down arrows, I can now position it uh, where I want to see it. And it travels, I mean, within your field of vision, it travels probably a good, uh, oh, four or five inches, which is really, really nice. And it's really bright. Um, let's see, let's go to the back button here for a minute. Okay, I can go down to HUD driving support. And if I click on that, I can decide what's showing in my HUD display. So. Uh, I can have uh, tachometer settings, okay? I can have a hybrid system. I can have it blank and not show any of that stuff. I, I happen to like the, uh, the tachometer setting in there. So I'm gonna leave that. You can have navigation that comes on. You can have driving assist features like your lane centering, dynamic cruise control, your compass can all be on. And you can turn those things on, those three on or off. Actually, all four on or off. Okay, so a lot of selection there. Okay, and then of course, if the HUD display seems like a little off canter, if you go to rotation, you can now use the left and right arrows to straighten out the HUD display. So depending on how you sit in a seat, it looks straight. And I always have to straighten it a little bit for myself. All right, so we'll go back here. Okay, next to HUD display then, you have 
uh, some other settings here. So we'll click and we'll hold, okay? And now we have the tire pressure system here. We can set the pressure we want the tires at uh, so it knows what to, like when to warn us. Um, and I can actually take a look at different wheels. Uh, you can also look at scheduled maintenance. Okay, uh, I don't want to reset it, so I'm just going to hit no. Okay, and then there's one more, and right here is where you can change some of the things that show up on your dashboard in this digital area. If I click and hold, now I can change the language, the units. Um, I can determine whether the uh, electronic vehicle portion is functioning uh, on or off, digital speed on or off, uh, gadget content, distance traveled type. I can actually turn off this whole multi-information display. Um, I can adjust what shows up on the pop-up display. Okay, That's things like navigation turns, telephone, brightness, that kind of stuff. That will just pop up on your display when, when it's needed. Okay. So uh, there's a couple more down here. Default settings. So if you run into an issue you need to reset things, you can do that. Now you do notice that at all times I've got an outside temperature display, I've got a gear indicator, and then my odometer. Okay, let's go backwards. And we have got one more down here. And if I if I go down, you get to messages. And this is where you'll get things like time to change oil, that kind of information will show up there. Or if there is an error. Now, taking a look over at where the tack usually is, there are a couple of, of interesting things. Let's move over to the... Um, infotainment screen. Now, again, this is a 14 speaker, 1200 watt sound system. Okay, it's a nine inch screen. It uses the Entune 3.0 uh, software. And uh, so we've got lots of physical buttons. And let's just start up here. Okay, basically we're on home screen already. And you see, I've got a split screen. So I've got navigation showing up here. I've got media up here and, and there would be a phone showing up here. So it's really nice. You have those three things all showing up at the same time. If you want to see the main menu, you can press that, and then you get all these icons that you can click on, all right? I'll come back to those in a little bit. Audio button. If I press that, it gives me a shortcut right to whatever's playing, okay? And I can also then click on the sound button right here, and then I can you know adjust things like the treble and the bass and the balance and that kind of stuff. All right, if I go down to the next button, this is my navigation. So I get a full screen map. If I uh, go back, I'm gonna go back to audio for a second so that when I go up to this button up here, which is seek, if I go up here, you'll notice that these, not the not the presets, but these start to change. So now I'm it's just like scrolling through our radio stations. Okay, and I can go backwards or forwards. Okay, if you want a shortcut to your phone, it's right here. Of course, there's no phone connected. And then over here, if I go back to this, I can look at apps that are on the system here. And it probably won't come up because it has to update. But uh, if there were any uh, apps that were available, um, that would show up right in there. Okay, well, let's go back to menu for a minute. And right here is your navigation button. So if you want to enter an address or something, you can do that here. You can also do that through voice command. Okay, I'm going to go back to menu for a minute. Here's another button for audio. Okay, which so so these, you know, kind of redundant from from this one. Okay, phone. Um, apps is going to be the same one that we pushed over here. So it's not going to show up anything right now. Um, projection. So um, if you connect like your Apple CarPlay, your iPhone to this, then that stuff will pop up. So you have Apple CarPlay. Sorry, Android Auto users. There's not one for you, but you can use Bluetooth and you can still stream everything right through that. Okay, uh, information icon. So if you press on this, you can look at economy, which is a cool graphic. Trip his information, history. Um, we can go to traffic incidents that are around us. Okay, through all these selections we can choose. Weather. Okay, it's nice, always nice to have the weather either where you are or where you're going to. Okay, and so we'll go back here to menu. 
All right. Uh, we were on info. And then you have vehicle alert in history. Okay. So lots of things in there. Okay. If we go down in here to climate, although there's physical buttons for all the climate stuff, you can do it uh, through the infotainment screen if you want. And uh, let's see. Let's go back. Uh, setup. Now, here's again where you can change according to this menu on the left. Right now, we're under general, so it's general things, clock, language, customized home screen, uh, Apple CarPlay, on or off. Um, let's see. And then you can see that there's an arrow here, and you can kind of scroll down, or you can just push up. Kind of interesting. You can do both. Okay. Um, you can, so let's, let's just take a look at a couple of these. So I want to take a look at the driver setting. So if I click on driver setting, okay, it's going to allow us to set up some preferences, audio presets, button colors, language, uh, to a certain Bluetooth paired phone, All right? Which I think is really nice, especially when two people drive the car. Okay. You can do a software update right there. And then down at the bottom, of course, you can set, um, the sensitivity level uh, for um, the sound in the, in the uh, media system when it's playing um, to di three different levels. Okay, let's go back up. We're in general already. Okay, if I go to customize home screen, this is the other button I want to look at. First of all, you notice, you remember before we had navigation here, we had uh, media here and phone here. If I click the change layout button, I actually get four different options as to how I want it. This is the way I had it. You can reverse the big picture to the left. You can have just two or you can have four. So let's say I want four. I just click it. And now it automatically puts some things in there for you, but you can, you can choose. So to change what shows up in each thing, you, you find it up here. So I'm going to start with the clock. And I'm going to say I want the clock up here. Okay, clock goes in there. Let's say I want um, economy to be down here. All right. Then I, I, I want audio and weather, and I'm going to leave those the way they are. Okay. Uh, so all I need to do is press my home screen. And now I've got four screens. So I love the way that you can customize that. That is just a really fun feature. Okay. Now if I press the menu button again and I go to display. Now I can actually turn the whole screen off if I don't, like I'm at night, whatever, I don't wanna see the brightness of it. Um, I can do that. Um, I can adjust brightness and contrast in general. Okay, and it, it shows you, and there is, there is a difference. Brightness, or Wow, you can even see the different screens. Okay, so if I if I go to my right, okay, again, it's 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 basically going to show you every screen that you would see on your car, and then you can see how it would look. Okay, so I'm gonna go back a second because I can go to camera, and I can um, display. I can address that now. It's interesting. I get that graphic for camera, but okay. Um, the point is you can adjust contrast and brightness. Okay, let's go back here. And so that's, you know, in basic, your your uh, infotainment system. You do have a power on and off and a, vo a physical volume and then a tune and scroll button right here. So if I, if I uh, am in the radio station, you can see them changing up there. So, all right, moving on down here to the climate control. This is very simply laid out, but you have uh, three-stage heated seats on both sides and you have three stage ventilated seats on both sides okay your uh, climate control shows up here again the one nice thing i like is they put the physical sync button so if you watch these two numbers when i hit sync they're both going to go to 72 and there we go Dri passenger temperature control is right here drivers on this side uh, like I said, this is auto climate control, so you can hit that auto button and it will automatically take care of your climate for you. Otherwise, you've got fan off, the whole spit system off. Wow, we'll leave that on auto. Defroster, you got rear defroster and mirror defrosters right here. 
and then your fan speed, and then your, of course, your mode where you want the air blowing, your recirculatory, and AC. Okay, just really, really, really nicely laid out. So you don't have to go on the infotainment screen at all for the climate control, but you can if you want. One of the cool things is right on the dashboard, you can't tell when, the, when, when it's not on, but it shows you rear artboard seats and the center seat for if the seat belts are attached. And eventually that goes off. But if you have people sitting there, it'll stay on. Really, really cool. Okay, um, moving on down here, you've got three mode buttons. So you've got Eco, and if I press that, I do get a little change on my dashboard. Uh, it lights up, it gives me a green line, shows me the, uh, the Eco mode. If I go to Normal, then I get, it takes away the green line. It just looks like it normally does. And if I go to Comfort, or Sport, excuse me, then I get a red line at the bottom, and it shows up Sport at the top. Okay. In addition to that, you have an auto hold feature here. So if you um, if you press that, then uh, and activate it, then when you press the brake and let go of it, it stays braked until you press the accelerator. And then if you just want an electronic mode, then you can press that button. And I don't know what the limit is on this particular one. Probably somewhere around 20, 25 miles an hour or so, and then it kicks back in the electric motor. But if you're driving slowly around, uh, you can uh, save gas just by using that mode. So, one of the really cool features on this car that, it, that is pro will probably end up being my favorite is the camera. All right, so if I put it in reverse, okay, you, you've got the 360 view, right? You've got um, a view out the front or around the whole side. You've got dynamic guidelines in the rear. You've got this top-down view. You've got this view here. I can change to just sort of a wide rear view. I can change it to a narrower, narrower view, okay? I can mute the warnings if I want. I really don't want to do that. I can change the types of guidelines that I have, right? Depending on what I'm backing into, um, and it, makes, it might make it easier for me. Um, but there's, uh, I showed you earlier on the other review, there's actually a camera button located on down here by your trunk release and your fuel filler release. And now watch the screen when I touch it. I think this is absolutely phenomenal. It ghosts out the car and shows you what's there. It shows you the tires, it shows you all the way around. And then when it comes back to the front, it stops, goes up and gives you the overhead view. And I'll tell you, Rob was standing earlier somewhere right about here and if you've looked at some of the car systems where they show you that top-down view, if someone's next to the car, you can see them, but it's hard. Not on this. I could clearly see his blue jeans. I mean, there wasn't. I couldn't see the top of his bald head, but I could see his blue jeans very clearly. And I, I just, I love that. And if you're sitting here, and this, I'm just in park now, so I'm checking my system, before, my car before I leave. Okay. If I want to see that again. I can click there, and now it's going to spin the whole car around in this graphic. So, I mean, it's just, I love it. Okay? If at any time you want to, you say, like, well, wait a minute, I think I saw something there. You can hit play again, and then you can stop it. Was that really what I saw? Hit play again, and it keeps going. That I mean, that's... I've, I've not seen that. That's the first time I have seen that where they ghost out the car and they give you that image. It's just amazing. Okay. Now, if I uh, click on that little icon on top, I can change the color of my car. So if my Avalon happens to be red or light blue or silver or white or that color uh, or a really like fluorescent blue, I can click that, hit back. And now I've got a blue car. Talk about the ability to customize some fun little things. But this feature, seriously a, a great safety feature. Uh, shiver parking on daycare or whatever. Oh, my gosh. I'd hit that button every day just to check my car before I moved it. Awesome. Love it. Thanks for watching.